Welcome back, take 444, the last of the seas this week. Um, and we're starting with uh, one I missed off uh, when I was showing Country Joe and the Fish. This is their third album uh, together on Vanguard, as the other two were. So this is from 68. Um, it's, uh, it's not as good as the other two um, by quite a long chalk. Uh, the best track on here is uh, Susan, which is um, very similar, sort of similar to sort of, uh, Eastern jamming, West Coast psych. Um, uh, but that is really the only uh, bright spot on here. Um, the rest of it is uh, there's kind of uh, a lot of the, the, they try too hard to uh, to spread their wings and uh, and kind of become more pop orientated I guess uh, maybe it's something to do with the record company I don't know but it's um it's not essential apart from Susan which um could fit onto the anywhere in the first two albums uh, everything else is um is a bit of a disappointment actually um but I also managed to pick up uh, and forgot to share this because I, I store it somewhere else um this which is a, a mighty box um it came out uh in 2017 it's called uh, The Wave of Electrical Sound, which is obviously from uh, their first album, one of the lyrics. Um, and it's, uh, what it is, it's, there's the, the back cover. It's uh, four albums, um, first two albums in mono and stereo, plus uh, a load of uh, goodies that you get with it. Uh, so you get um, a booklet called The Dual Nature of the Infinite One, which has um, got lots of uh, great pictures and uh, and interviews and stuff in it. Um, what what else you get? You, so you get. I, I managed to pick it up fairly cheaply, so that's why I, why I've got it. Um, this great uh, poster, which is the calendar from 1968, I think it is February 68. Um, Put on your wall and cover up any damp patches. And then there is a, uh, this is my second copy of the fish game. It's that way up, um, which came out with the with the second album. I have an original of that, which I think I showed. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the, the good things about this is um, on the, uh, I'm not sure if this is the mono or the stereo copy, uh, on the mono copy of, uh, Electric music for the mind and body, um, and they are worth hearing in mono if you if you haven't heard them. Um, is you get uh, this alternative cover, which is really good. Uh, I really like that. Back cover's the same, and then uh, lovely mint copy of the stereo, and uh, I feel like I'm fixing to die in mono and stereo a slight color variation there back covers are the same though um so yeah um, i managed to, to pick that up quite cheaply at the record fair um and there was also this uh, huge booklet in it which has got some fabulous posters and and such in there we go uh, i think there was a dvd in it as well but uh, somewhere in there a DVD of them uh, in 67 in San Francisco um, next up playing on the turntable at the moment is uh, this monster Alice Coltrane Journey and Sachi Jananda um, with Ferro Saunders on sax if you don't know Alice Coltrane check her out um, she's got her, her stuff in the late 60s was uh, very psychedelic, freeform jazz. Um, uh, if you're scared off by that uh, epithet, don't uh, don't worry. Freeform jazz is not um, all screeching saxes and odd time signatures. It's um, it's quite meditative and uh, just really cool stuff. Um, 
they don't get a huge amount of love on the uh, on the VC. I think uh, Sir Derek's shown shown some Alex Coltrane and probably Mazzy as well. But um, I really like her. Uh, this is the only one I've got on vinyl. I've got uh, four or five of her others, but they're all on CD. Um, so this is uh, an issue that came out um, just a few years ago. Um, 1997 it actually came out this one so uh yeah on on impulse as well a fantastic uh, record and uh next up um and the last of the seas as uh, is befitting for a band of their stature is the mighty can um one of the cornerstones of crap rock one of the most essential bands in that idiom um Formed, I think it's 68 um, and they are just awesome if you don't know can really check them out um, the first uh, first two albums I believe it was um, are with Malcolm Mooney um, that's the cover of the first album uh, monster movie there is a, a, a another cover that it came out with um, which I don't have so this originally came out on the uh, Music Factory Records, which is a small um, label from uh, that way up, a small label from Munich in Germany. Um, this is a, a reissue, obviously. Uh, I don't know how many copies of the original came out, but not that many, um, and you certainly wouldn't see them very often, uh, and they'd probably go for enormous prices. So they're a German band. Uh, Malcolm Mooney was a uh, New York sculptor um, who, was, uh, who joined the band in, um, I think 69 this came out Let me just check uh, so yeah this came out in 1969 and um, monster movie made in a castle with better equipment it's called um, and it's very good uh, that's the start of the of their journey their next album um, was soundtracks from 1970 um, this is the, the first album with Dama Suzuki, who, was, uh, who would go on to become their, their singer for, for the rest of their time. Um, he's a, a Japanese uh, itinerant uh, hippie uh, who was uh, recruited when they, um, when they saw him performing uh, before a gig in Munich, I think it was. Malcolm Mooney is on a couple of tracks on this, uh, but uh, the rest of it is with, uh, with Dama Suzuki. Um, the one of the main tracks on here is Mother Sky, which is uh, just a fantastic track um, at 14 minutes, um, and it's uh, everything they did from here on, from soundtracks onwards, um, up and, uh, until um, uh, in my view, up until future days is uh, essential. Um, wonderful, wonderful band. Uh, so that came out in uh, 1970. In 1971, they kind of released their most famous record, and this is where they really hit their stride and uh, were absolutely flying by this point. Um, so this is Tago Mago, uh, named after an island in the Mediterranean near Ibiza, I believe. Um, fantastic uh, cover, very famous artwork there, very recognisable. And um, this is a, a reissue. Don't have originals of these, it's sort of spoon. Um, and uh, yeah, side one of this has got Paper House Mushroom and Oyer on it, which is uh, possibly the, the, the quintessential crowd rock uh, side of a, of a record. Um, just fantastic. And mate, that's the label. Amazing uh, drum work from Jackie Liebesite and um, Michael Caroli and Ogazuke, uh, and of course, Damo. Um, this is absolutely essential crowd rock. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't, can't go wrong with this one. Wonderful, wonderful record. Uh, next up, next up is uh, the they're on United Artists, and uh, this is from 1972. Uh, this is Eddie Bamyasi, um, and is uh, again absolutely essential. Uh, Another reissue, all of uh, my can stuff is reissued. Didn't get into them until the early 90s, um, which uh, now is uh, 30, over 30 years ago, but um, I've been listening to uh, 
constantly since then and uh, they are absolutely amazing group wish I'd have seen them live um, but I didn't um, but yeah another absolutely essential wonderful album and uh, the last one of their long line of releases that's uh, essential is Future Days. So uh, Future Days came out in 73. Um, that's the inner, all these pressings that uh, came out um, not too long ago uh, on Spoon are really good. They're really well produced and, and very quiet. And um, yeah, some good liner notes on there and photos. Again, this is a great record, really, really good. Um, I'm sure you all know Can, uh, pretty much everybody who's uh, interested in German music will have all of their stuff, I guess. Well, all of it up to there. I didn't particularly like the stuff that it went, they became much more mainstream after Future Days. Um, uh, wasn't, I wasn't too interested in from what I've heard of them later on, but they have uh, released um, some fantastic live albums uh, recently. Um, I think I've seen a few people showing them. This is the one I've got live in Stuttgart in 75. Um, it's a triple album and um, they're really flying on this. So th it's all it's all jamming basically um, on beautiful orange vinyl. Um, let me open up the open up the uh, so that's the that's the inner cover yeah so the the track listing on here is just uh one to six i guess uh yeah one to five um that's uh the rear cover um and it comes with a a nice 12 inch booklet as well with some liner notes um they, there's also a live in brighton i think from around the same time which i will pick up um because they're they're very good i mean they're quite a bit pricey um but they are triple albums um and yeah they're live albums but the sound quality is very good and once can get into their groove um there's not too many bands could can uh, live with them in that in that respect i think uh Beefheart's uh, magic band at times um, live uh, kind of uh, achieved the same feeling, uh, sort of uh, almost level levitating it with the music. Um, uh, and I've, I saw the magic band uh, without Beefheart a few times, and uh, yeah, they were, they're fantastic. But um, check out Can Live at Shutgart 1975. Very good, very good album. Okay, so that's uh, that's about it. Um, I'll be starting with the D's next um I've got quite a few of those probably not quite as many as C but um we'll check that out uh, in the next video and I'll see you all then bye bye <laughs>